We're coming down from a solar storm that brought aurora to mid-latitudes, and we say goodbye, Comet Atlas, and hello, Comet Swan. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. It's been an exciting week in space weather. We're coming down from a solar storm, the likes of which we haven't seen in quite some time. And it brought aurora as far south as Seattle, Washington in the northern hemisphere, and as far north as Christchurch, New Zealand in the south. And just like that, we're now beginning to see some fast solar wind. It's almost as like it's a chaser after a stiff drink because it's brought us back up to active conditions, and we're easily going to see that over the next couple days. Now, as we switch to our front side sun, you can see that remnant coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth strike zone. That's where that source of fast solar wind is. It's kind of bumping us up to active conditions now. And also on the 19th, we had a little bit of a filament eruption in the south, and it looks like it did launch a very small solar storm. So we may have yet another solar storm that's Earth directed, but it's hard to tell, and it's probably going to be a lot smaller than this one we just had. Switching to our far sided sun, this is Stereo A, and it's looking at the sun pretty much from the side. You can see that bright region in Stereo's view. And it's rotating off of the sun's west limb. Now this region is rotating into Earth view and it will take over the next couple days for it to come fully into view, but it should boost the solar flux back into the marginal range for radio propagation on Earth's day side, which is good news because on Earth's night side with these solar storms, I could tell you the GPS reception and radio comms for space traffic probably isn't doing so well. By now you have probably heard about the demise of poor Comet Atlas. About a month ago, Atlas was poised to become the first really bright naked eye comet in a decade. But then Atlas shrugged, and now it's falling apart. Best estimates indicate it is fragmented into at least three pieces, none of which will be able to produce the kind of significant display we had all hoped. Atlas's fate might have been predictable, considering that soon after its discovery in late 2019, it brightened extremely rapidly. Combined with the fact that it was traveling in the same orbit as the Great Comet of 1844, made many believe that it was a remnant of that famous comet, which meant it could either become spectacular in its own right, or disintegrate right before our eyes. It chose the latter. Indeed, the brightening trend of Atlas flattened on March 17th, and by early April it was fading. Astronomers Yi and Zhang published this paper in the Astronomer's Telegram that showed the comet head, or coma if you prefer, was elongating. In comet speak, this is bad news. Comets don't usually elongate, and when they do, it means its nucleus is beginning to fragment. But even as one comet dies, another comes into view. On April 11th, the same day that Atlas broke into three pieces, Amateur astronomer Michael Mazziazzo discovered a new comet while looking at data from NASA's SOHO spacecraft. The comet suddenly appeared in images from the Solar Wind Anisotropies instrument, also known as SWAN. Now, this instrument was never designed to find comets. Its job is to survey the solar system for hydrogen. But because comets often spray a significant amount of hydrogen into space in the form of water ice, they're often easily detected by SWAN. So, of course, this comet has been appropriately been named SWAN. Currently, Comet SWAN is only accessible to those south of the equator, and it can be seen in the faint constellation of Sculptor. As of April 16th, it was shining at magnitude plus 7.8, easy enough to pick up in good binoculars, and displaying a head roughly one-sixth the apparent width of the moon. So will SWAN become bright enough to be seen with the naked eye? No one's sure yet. Like Atlas, Comet SWAN appears to be relatively small. Assuming it continues to brighten at its current pace, it could reach third magnitude during the final week of May. And that would make it bright enough to be visible to the naked eye just when people in the northern hemisphere could have an opportunity to see it, very low in the west-northwest sky after sunset, and then again low in the east-northeast sky before sunrise. And lucky us, we will have a new moon on May 22nd, which will give us the darkest skies of the month, perfect for viewing. 
Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are dealing with the fast solar wind from that coronal hole that's rotated in through the Earth strike zone. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions, but we could get up to about a 20 to 30 percent chance of a minor storm here over the next couple days. At mid latitudes, we're also only expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have about a 15 percent chance of active conditions. And then things will begin to settle down. We might get just a little bit of boost in activity activity from that new solar storm that was launched on the 19th, but it looks to be pretty minor, so likely things will continue to settle down in through the weekend. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to big solar flares. Now we do have a bright region that is rotating into Earth view off of the sun's east limb, but it doesn't look like it's going to be a sunspot, so we still have a spotless sun, and that means the GPS reception on Earth's day side should continue to be top notch. However, this bright spot is boosting the solar flux back into the low 70s, so we are back into the marginal range for radio propagation, so that's good news for you amateur radio operators and emergency responders. We're probably going to continue to be somewhere in the low 70s easily over the next few days and possibly in through the rest of the week before things begin to settle back down. Now also, because we are at solar minimum, we do have a higher cosmic ray flux than we normally would have, so you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the marginal range for radiation dose and this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week has been pretty exciting. We're now coming down from a big solar storm that brought aurora to many parts of the world. And with the fast wind chaser that we have, it looks like the fun is continuing, at least at high latitudes. You all should be able to get some more aurora views, at least over the next couple things before things really begin to settle down even more. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, I told you to take heart. We had that bright region rotating into Earth view, and guess what? It has boosted that solar solar flux for us again. We are now back into the low 70s, which means marginal radio propagation, and likely these conditions will last easily over the next few days, possibly in through the weekend before things begin to settle down. And now you GPS users, well, it's been maybe a little bit of a rough ride for you, especially on Earth's night side with the solar storming that we've had. But the day side reception for GPS should look pretty top notch, and as long as you stay away from the dawn dust terminators and away from Aurora, your GPS reception should be okay. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.